All right, so we're just going to clean the flange up. Um, use a wire brush, a bristle brush. I use both. Use the bristle brush first and uh, knock off the hard stuff, and then go back with the stainless steel wire brush. Uh, make sure I get all the, the little tiny stuff out of there. to that. Now it's nice and shiny, ready to get welded on, especially around the areas um, where the actual collector, the runners are going to sit at. So that's been, uh, I pay a little extra uh, attention to that while I'm doing this. And the, the runners are good, good to go. So we'll just go ahead over there and uh, to my rolling table and we'll talk about how we get this set up to get together. Okay, so we're um, just going to wipe everything down with acetone. I just like to get the flange, you know, inside, outside, all around. And same with the, uh, the runners, the 16 gauge steel. And you can see that even though that was pretty clean, uh, you know, already sanded down and whatnot, that it's actually pretty dirty. So. So that's, you know, just be sure to take time, wipe everything down, the clear the metal, the better the welds are going to get. I have to wipe my weld surface down as well. Okay, so, um, the welding on this kit is pretty straightforward. There's really not a lot of, you know, tricks or any kind of, um, you know, things special you have to do. The, uh, the trick with the T4 open is the merged collector is you know how do you get this here you know cut down so it will sit nice and flat and, and evenly distributed over the flange itself so that's that's pretty much going to be the focus of this is how we do that so how do we tack this together and uh, weld it and, and all that that's kind of the question uh, so what I'm going to be using today is just uh, my HTP welder, I'm going to be running probably about 100 amps, maybe 105 amps. Uh, on the center section, I'll be going a lot less than that, though, so it's just 16 gauge. Um, I'll probably be running about 60 amps on those. I'll use 045 uh, ER70S, you know, 123, whatever, uh, to make all these welds, although you could use anywhere, uh, you could use 116 for whatever you want to use. Uh, not super critical. So we'll go ahead and get this tacked up, and, uh, and I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so uh, I forgot to go over my actual other equipment. I'm going to be using a uh, number 20 flex head, which is the same as a number 9 for the most part. Um, I'm going to be using this uh, big monster gas lens thing, um, not because I need it. I usually use a number 8 to do almost all the welds on this thing, probably all the welds on this thing. Uh, but a friend gave it to me and I'm goofing around, so I'm going to play with that today. Uh, but number eight gas lens will work just as well as pretty much this whole thing. And uh, 330 seconds tungsten. And I'll be flowing a lot more gas than normal on this. I usually, with number eight, use about 20 uh, CFM. With this, I'll probably be using 30, 35 just because it takes a little bit more to push them. Okay, get ready to tack these up. Um, I usually just hold them with my hand. Make sure they're lined up, so got it nice and lined up. These usually come, I, I, uh, when I cut them, I take them over the belt sander 
and I, I, I go ahead and sand them down until I get this, this uh, nice flush even fit for you before I ship them out. So if you're buying that, you can be expected it'll, it'll have good fit up already. Um, so I just hold them together like this and uh, I, I make sure it's grounded because it's no fun uh, when you weld and you don't have it grounded. So just get a little zap, kind of pack them together. And then I'm going to flip it over real quick before it starts pulling and do the same on the other side. And that's, that's it for the tack. So you see I just uh, real quick tack them on the other side. And all I'm going to do is just run beads uh, all the way around this. So I'll have, you know, a welded, a welded runner when I get ready to do that. Okay, so that went pretty well. Um, as I got to the end, I should have backed off the heat a little bit. I didn't. I blew out like the, the very end of it, and uh, you know that's just that's just real. That happens. So um, there it is. And uh, I just went back and just you know stacked beads over top of it, and, you know, until I uh, filled in that little gap that I blew out. But it's a little warm, but there you can see. And now I'm just going to go over and do the other side, same thing. But there's the other side. So now we're welded all the way around on this. Okay, so now we're uh, welded all the way around. And all we gotta do is make this meet up on top of the flange. And that's why well, I haven't bolted the flange down to anything yet, so I need to take it with me over to the device. And I'm just gonna use it to measure up on, on the vise over there. So. That's where we're at, and we're going to head on over to the vise. Alright, so we're over here at the vise, and we're getting ready to flatten out this collector and cut it so it will fit on the flange. So, um, what I do is I squeeze it first, so I'm going to go in there and we'll squish it this way, and, uh, and that's going to make it so it kind of squares out, so the bottom will be kind of that rectangle shape that we need. And when I go to cut it, it'll be less material uh, for me to, to deal with, you know, fine grinding off or whatever. So um, start by just squeezing it in the vise. Just open it up. Drop one side in. Drop the other side in. Try to make sure it's about as straight as possible. Give it a little downward pressure and then just start giving it a squeeze. And I just wash the inside and just try to Look to make sure it gets um, flat. That's pretty good. Uh, what we're going to do now is just, so we got this kind of look going on. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take and smash the, the, the inside corners, the middle section outward, so it makes it more flat as well. How I do that is I just grab a, I use a uh, half inch bar of stainless steel and uh, just stick this stainless steel inside the flange and just kind of bang it and we'll just knock it down.
you'll see what I mean by that, how it's now it's kind of squared on the outside. And uh, take and drop that over top of the flange and see, yeah, we're kind of kind of getting there. So uh, what we got to do now is just cut this off. And uh, you can measure the uh, measure the uh, circumference of the uh, flange, the hole, and transfer that over with a with a tape measure on this thing. Uh, but these just 99% of the time when I cut them, I just cut it right at the base right there, that notch flat. So that usually you know, takes care of it. Um, you can cut it uh, a little higher and then, you know, back work the, uh, the back of the flange with the die grinder, but, you know, I, I like to die grind as little as possible just because I don't like to put any slivers of metal all over me. So, we're going to go ahead and cut this now. And what it does by squeezing that, like I said, if I squeeze it first in the vise, and uh, before I cut, then I already have kind of that, that outline. So if I was to cut it first and then squeeze it, then everything's going to get kind of, you know, oval shape from just the distortion of the metal. Um, so it's just easier to do that first, get a rough shape, and then work it down. Uh, so I just make a line, take a tape measure, wrap it around, and it's not to, to measure anything. It's just to give me a straight line because that's what I want is just cut a flat straight line all the way around this thing. And if you're really good, you can just throw it in the vise and uh, cut away. And I'm not. So now we're taking shape. All right, so we got that flattened out and uh, cut properly. And we we'll take a look to see how it fits the flange. And just, you know, like I said, it's just a rough shape to begin with. And it's not too bad. There's a little bit of overlap on the inside. So we're just going to work it in the vise a little bit. And, uh, Get it to get it the best fit we can, and and then I'll take it over to the belt sander and just make sure that that's nice and flat. So when I go to put it to my flange, I get a good, nice, tight fit up. I'm just going to remove the excess metal on this. and the back of the vise sometimes squish just a little differently, which I don't know why, but it just seems to happen. So I kind of alternate the, my, as I clamp down the vise on either side, um, just try to get it as uniform as possible. And I just need to flatten this out. So. Throw that in the vise for the bar now. And just use it to give me the flatness I want on that one side, and I'll probably do the same over here. This way now. 
Okay, that looks good. So we'll grab the camera and show you what it looks like. All right, and this is after I went over to the belt sander and uh, just flattened the bottom out so you can see. Now we got real nice uh, fit up where it goes in at. The uh, inside got a little lip on the on there, but nothing nothing much. Like I said, we can go in there with the die grinder and smooth that out, which is important on these uh, T4s, like I've said before, because they, they push a lot of a lot of hot gas through, and and if you got little ledges like that, you get hot spots. It'll heat up and cause cracking, which you don't want after putting all your work into stuff. So. There's the other side, and they got good fit up. Actually, I'm gonna put that big booger in the back where I blew through it, and it'll actually sit like that. So, um, so that was the hard part, really, and it really wasn't all that hard. All you gotta do is go over there and, and run a bead around the bottom of it now, and uh, it'll be good to get. So, hey, I'm getting ready to weld this on, and uh, we'll all set up. So I just bolted my flange down to my big old aluminum block, uh, and that's gonna help prevent distortion. I'm gonna weld it on here, let it pull on here. And uh, if it pulls or whatever, hopefully it will uh, come out nice and flat, which is what I want. So now I'm just going to line up the, uh, the collector on top here, exactly how I want to weld it. I'll go ahead and get tacking here. Okay, so um, felt a little bit off today, but you know sometimes you don't always get what you want. Uh, but got all wow, that sucker is warm. So okay, and got all welded up and uh, looks pretty good. It's got uh, plenty of heat in it, good penetration. Um, that's gonna be a great weld. So we're just gonna uh. Be a good collector. We're just going to let it sit down and sit and cool for a while. Uh, and then once it's done cooling, we're going to go ahead and break that, that uh, collector off there. 
I'll run the back of it on the belt sander and uh, I'll go on the side of the, those ports and uh, port it out a little bit with a die grinder and uh, clean up the sanding disc and that'll be it. It'll be ready to go. So uh, next time you see it, it'll be pretty much all done. Don't think you need to see any of that stuff and uh, I'll just show you the finished product. All right, so um, here's the finished collector. Uh, I did like I said, guys. Took it over to the belt sander and just surface the back, so you can see it's all nice and shiny and flat. Um, and that's about it. Ran the beads around it, and uh, kit is done. So, so this one would be for a 2.25, and it's just a little bit, you know, doesn't have the flared ends. You could slip fit 2.25 a little on the loose side in there, but if you want to run a MIG bead around it, it'd probably be pretty good. Just space it off so you can bottom out, space it off just a little bit, and take and MIG that up. So that's a, one of those options with these um, flared fittings that I like. And uh, I'll give you a look inside if you can see through there. Just the, I want to show you the final uh, fit up that we were able to achieve with this kit. And light on it and the focus so got really good fit up in there and all I did was just you know once I was done just take a little bit of a, a die grinder to it and uh, some a little sanding disc and uh, we'll get you know excellent uh, you know excellent flow through there because there's nothing really to hang up on because we got it all worked out so that's kind of fit up you know a little bit put a little bit of time into it a little bit of effort and uh, that's kind of fit up you can expect out of the, uh, the, the undivided T4. Um, if I was doing a stainless, I'd probably do you know roughly the same thing. So I'd just tack it together, I'd cut it, and then I'd just tack it on the base, and I'd weld it up and then up as I back purge, and that would just uh, help draw heat out of there because it'd have something to, to pull the heat to when I'm doing that thin 16 gauge, and it also uh, gives me something to back, you know, back purge with, so I'm not trying to back purge just these two little runners. Uh, together, so that, that's pretty much the only difference. And I might make a video for that, and I might not. But hey, you know, for 40 bucks, that's what you get. You get the two runners and the flange. It's a pretty good kit, pretty good deal. Um, if you just want to save yourself the the, the heartache and the trouble, uh, you know, for 80, 80, I think it's 85 bucks on my website, um, you get this right here already pre-done, and ready to go. So uh, thanks for tuning in to Monkey Fab videos, and uh, please check out my products in the link below.